Hello and welcome. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to render a site plan in Twinmotion. Twinmotion is a real-time visualization software for architects and even civil engineers. And this can ensure that you get a quick site plan that you can show to your clients and you can have it be as realistic as possible. So in this video, we're going to look at how to add surfaces, how to add trees, how to add vegetation, and also add lighting to actually help your site come to life. So I have a site plan here. It's a scale of one to 500. It has some buildings and a road on the side it also has some trees and shrubs and there's a proposed road to take you into the buildings that are supposed to be there so more like building parts and there's a block one block two and block three and i modeled this in autodesk revit yeah to do that i actually imported the floor plan into revit and scaled it to one is to 500 and then i went on to remodel that site and then we're going to take it into twin motion and try to use the twin motion <clears throat> so we're going to take it so we're going to take it into twin motion and try to render that site plan so look at how it looks in 3d this is what i was able to come up with it's a very simple model we're going to do most of the work in twin motion so in revit you want to make sure that you're in a 3d view like this then head over to the file menu and then head over to export and then choose fbx export we're going to just export it as fbx and then you can save it however you want. I'm just going to call mine site plan. And you can choose which version you want. I prefer just leaving it as fbx.expo. If you're using an older version or an older model of this, or any of these softwares, you can use 2015 and below. I'm just going to use the normal fbx file and leave everything as it is and then click save. Now that we have our file saved, we can go into twin motion and then go ahead and import that file. I'm just going to click open and then over to my documents. I think that's where it is. So we're looking for site plan .fbx. and there we're going to go ahead and click open. And then we can see collapse by material inside of Revit. I already designed all the materials that we need and the grass and the asphalt for the road. All the stuff are going to be read by twin motion. If we're using collapse by material, I'm just going to go ahead and click import. And then we can see the site plan in here. It looks orange. Everything looks orange, but that's just the beginning of how it's going to be. We can just take a sneak peek out like this to see what our site plan is going to look at. So we have to now model this we can get a clearer view of it by using the mouse to actually just click and drag. And it's going to just give us a clear picture. So we can start. What I like to do first is to get an image of what the site plan is going to look like. So I'm just going to find a clear angle that I'm going to use something that has it at the center like this. Just let me just change. Okay, so just to have a clear picture of what the site is going to look like, it doesn't have to be flat straight. I can just have it look like this, and then so this is what it's going to be. I can go over to the media section and then click an image just to create an image of the site plan. And inside this image, we can zoom in as far as we want and then have it look like this. Just get an angle to get the shot that we're looking for, and then you can obviously refresh it. And then once we have the site plan that we're looking for we can then quit the image mode and then go about assigning material so the first thing i'm going to assign is the material for the grass in the environment here so i'm just going to go over to materials and then head over to ground i'm going to use nature and nature we're going to use grassy ground you can just drag that and drop it in here and then that's enough i think i can add some grunge because it's normal grass from it's normal natural grass so it's going to have a lot of wear and tear so I'm going to increase the grunge all the way up. I can reduce the luminosity for this to be a bit dark since it's F material. We can do the same thing for the asphalt. Let's go back to ground on the material man-made. There's asphalt and asphalt 2. I'm just going to use asphalt 2. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. So I'm going to drag that and drop it in there. And then for the inner road, I think I'm going to use asphalt 3 or asphalt 4 just to make it slightly different. But like I said in the beginning, it doesn't really matter. You can just drag the material and drop it over there. You notice that there's also some parts of the curb stones that are here. These curb stones that are on the material, they are maybe they could be concrete. So you can just look for a different material. Just dial back a little bit and find material for concrete. There is concrete. I almost missed it and i can use an exposed type of concrete or a fine concrete let's just go for this poured concrete over here and just drag it and drop it and that's going to be the material for the curbstones the buildings i'm not really going to worry too much about them but it does help to actually bring something in there 
So I'm just going to use material wall coverings for the walls and just pick the most random wall that is there. Plaster covering O2. Drag that and drop it in there. It should have the same plaster covering for all the buildings. That's good. The next thing we're going to look for is the roof covering. You can just pick one of the roof coverings here. It's going to apply the same thing for all of them. Mm, this one looks too orange. Let's just pick the other one. There we go. So we have our roof covering. If you go back to the media section and if we look back here on the media that we've created, we already have our site plan coming to life. What is left for us to do now is to add some vegetation. You can see there are some small trees on this other side, like five trees, and then there are three other trees on this other side of the building. So we're going to go ahead and add those. I can just go back to material, quit the image mode, by the way, so I can zoom in freely. I can then look for vegetation now, and then I'm going to add trees. We can pick any of these trees here. There's supposed to be three on this side. So we add one tree here. You can add some variation to the trees. And then add the last one, let me say Katsuni tree. There are three on this side. There's supposed to be five on this other side. So we can pick a different kind of tree that isn't so massive. Let's try this Jinko tree. It looks pretty small, I know. But we compare it with other trees that are slightly bigger. Just to create some variation. Nature has a lot of variation, so it helps to do that. We can add a sweet gum tree over here. There's supposed to be five. So we can just keep searching as an American pine tree. Oh, this one's quite big. So we see that they're getting closer to the end, which is not where they're supposed to be. So you can just select the tree as it is and then move it where you want the tree to be. Let's, let's get one in there. Get this next one. So one more tree, we add a sweet birch tree at the front, just outside the other one. So we now have our trees in place. You can see what our site plan is starting to look like now. Now from the site plan, we can see that there are three trees here and there are three on this other side and two on this other side and one at the corner here. So there are like six trees on this other side, well arranged. And then there are three more trees that we need to add here. In order not to waste too much time, I'm actually going to duplicate some trees. So the smallest tree that we had that we brought into the picture is this one. You can press the F key when you select an element just to zoom into that tree. So we have this one tree. I'm going to move it to the very corner. You can select the tree and then hold shift on the keyboard and then click where you want to move the tree. So hold shift and move It's going to copy the elements to the other side. You can see we need only one instance. I'm going to just select a copy. So in case I make changes to the other tree, it's not going to affect this one. So there we go. As we recall, there are three more trees down this way. So we're going to have to find a way and add those. I think I'm going to use this, just create a copy of it. And then add a different pecan tree over here. And then another European birch tree. Now that they are crowded on this side, it means only one thing. We have to move some of these trees away from where they are. So you can just hold on to this and then move it forward a little bit. So now the next tree, I'll move them forward. Do the same thing to this one. I think that's okay. So that's the three trees that we have on the other side. So it's remaining the other five trees that are supposed to be on this other side. We can use it as a reference and press the F key and then just pan around. There we go. So we need to add more trees. We can add this Japanese birch. It's a big tree, but it's okay. <coughs> can also bring in this china berry tree just drop it in the middle somewhere there's supposed to be two more here but we'll, we'll get to those ones add a banyan tree over here there's three here and then there's two on this other side there's a coke tree 
hard running here. I know the trees are pretty random, but this is just for the tutorial that we're doing. So now that we have our trees in place and we have our road and our material, the next thing we can do is to go back to our image and see what we're working with. So this is the site plan. I could make a better image of this by just zooming in and then leaning the site plan forward this way. And we zoom. just arrange the camera to get the right view that you're looking for. So before I go ahead and export this, um, we want to just check the image and see that we have exactly what we want. We have the site plan as it's supposed to be. You can make changes to the camera settings or the render settings, but I'm just going to leave it on standard and then allow everything to be the way they are. The global elimination distance, I can actually increase this to maybe 5,000 because the site is quite big. So I will, I'm going to want global elimination to affect everybody. I'm also going to increase the global elimination intensity to the highest 1.0. The shadows as well, I'm also going to increase this to a value of maybe 5,000 just to make sure that there's shadow everywhere the way that it should be. You can turn down the shadow bias as well. So after playing with all these settings, there are other settings that you can actually play around with. I'm just going to go ahead and export the image now because we can make additional settings to the image that we go ahead to export. Go back to the image category here and then we're going to select um, real-time rendering can uncheck the lumen and the path tracer because we don't want to use these options right now. We're going to use only the real-time render, select that, and then go ahead and select export. Save a location where it's going to go to and then allow your export to go ahead and export. Now that you have your image exported, you can take it into Photoshop and make additional changes to it, or you can just present it like this as a rough conceptual image of what the site is going to look like. You can make additional changes to the image in Photoshop. Maybe use the filter, the camera raw filter, just to add some color and some realism and some textures to the image. But that is how you can go about creating a render of your site plan with Twinmotion. If you did enjoy this video, do want to leave a like on it and also share it with somebody that might find it useful. And for more architectural and visualization videos like this, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button so you can get more videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.